Well, I did it. I made my front bumper. In this video, I'm going to explain what I did and why. And if you want to stick around for the second part of the video, you can watch what I captured in the process of making this. This is not a how-to video. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, I'm not a good welder. I don't necessarily know how to fabricate or design stuff. I'm just showing you what I did. Perhaps it will give you some ideas or inspiration or help you decide what not to do. As you can see, this is a very minimalist design. I wanted something that was very simple, very clean, and very lightweight. I like the idea of tubular steel bumpers, but I'm not super fond of the look of the sort of round tube bumpers. So my idea was to use square tubing instead. Also, I don't have a way to bend round tubing, and so that gave me the ability to uh, weld angles in. And ultimately, I kind of preferred that sort of angular look for uh, the front bumper rather than the rounded curves. Those of you already familiar with my build had already seen the winch mount that I put on here. So this bumper is built around a professionally made, commercially available winch bumper that's designed for the second gen Nissan Frontier. A uh, subscriber was kind enough to hand this off to me when he got a different bumper. This is made by PRG Products. I will put a link to their website in the description below. Uh, it's a really nice build, very solid. I didn't trust my own fabrication skills to build something that would potentially have to support the weight of the truck. And I'm sorry about the gunfire in the background. I'm up in the hills just outside of town and uh, it's Saturday and uh, people are out shooting. The critical functional parts of this bumper were professionally made. And so that way I'm assured that uh, if I do need to winch off of something, if I do need to use these recovery points, um, it's solid. What I've done is very, very superficial. It's very lightweight. My goal was just to finish off the sort of rough edges that had been cut and have some place to mount some lights. I didn't want to sacrifice any of the approach angle that I had gained by removing all of the sort of plastic bumper parts that were up here. And ultimately, after driving around for a number of months on trips with just the winch mount on there, I realized I didn't feel like I needed much else down in here. I really just wanted to sort of finish it off and make it look a little less raw. And as I said, I wanted to keep it as lightweight as possible. I've added maybe 20 pounds of steel to this, if that. One of my other goals was to keep the winch as accessible as possible. Many aftermarket bumpers completely enclose the winch and in order to access it for any sort of servicing, uh, you would have to drop the entire bumper. I like the idea of keeping the winch accessible without having to drop the bumper. These horizontal members that make up the front and corners here are two inch steel tube. I use one inch by three inch steel tube to mount it to the winch mount here, there as you can see, and also that same one inch by three inch tube makes up the, uh, the vertical portion of the light bar here. This bar that I put here to mount the lights is one and a half inch by two inch um, angle steel that is one eighth of an inch thick. I had some perforated angle steel sitting around from a previous project and uh, I welded some short lengths of it on here in order to mount my Diodynamics SS3 pods. And I left a series of holes in that so I can actually change my mind about exactly where I mount these starting to rain on me. I pretty much knew right away when I got the Frontier that I wanted to incorporate some sort of large round driving lights on the front because I just like the look. I think it looks good. This company, Colite LED, reached out to me months and months ago and I took a look at their products and I liked what I saw and so I accepted this set of seven inch driving lights. Now I don't have these wired up yet. Once I get everything wired up, I will go out and uh, we'll do a full test and review of these lights. They're very nicely made. I'm really happy with the look. I'm happy with the build of these lights. The wiring, the wiring harness, everything looks really nice. And so I'm excited to get these running on the truck. Obviously I do still need to get a winch sorted and I have not got a winch yet. Uh, I'm still sort of weighing my options there. Uh, I've got a lot of people saying, you have to get a Warren. I've also had a lot of people express interest in seeing me run a really budget option like something from Harbor Freight. Since my channel tends to revolve around budget solutions, um, you know, 
many viewers are interested in seeing how the budget solution would work out. I just don't know yet. Uh, you're welcome to comment below what your thoughts are. That will be coming, that will be coming soon. All right, here's the part of the video where I give you the inspiring talk about if you put your mind to it, you can do it. This kind of project is accessible, but I'm not going to say that because this was a pain in the butt and I don't think that I will ever take on this kind of fabrication project again. I need to do a back bumper on this thing and um, I am not going to DIY it. I ran into frustration after frustration on this project. Now I've done some smaller welding projects and they've turned out okay. And maybe, you know, I need more experience, maybe I need better equipment, I don't know. And it may be that I'm just not very good at it. I can accept that as well. After the amount of welding I have done at this point, I should be getting better. And sometimes I weld and I have beautiful welds that come out so perfect. And then the very next weld will just be total garbage. So I spent so much time, there was so much time I had to redo things, I had to take things back apart. Um, I had to weld and weld again. I think it's plenty strong. I think it's not going anywhere. The parts that I added on there weigh very, very little. And um, I think that there's no concern there about anything falling off the truck. That said, the welds just don't look good. <laughs> it's fine from a safe viewing distance, like where you are right there. So I was not super complete with filming the actual fabrication process in part because it's not a DIY and uh, I don't have anything that I can teach you. You should watch videos from people who know what they're doing if you want to learn how to do stuff like this. But if you're interested in seeing the process that I went through, keep watching. I tried to do some initial mocking up with some cardboard packaging I had, but since I wasn't planning to use steel plate that could be easily mocked up with flat cardboard, it ultimately was easier to just start working with the actual pieces of steel. Everything I used was remnants and scrap from the local steel yard sold by the pound. I spent $26 on steel and actually have quite a bit of that left over. I started by building the horizontal arms with their vertical pieces that would get welded to the winch mount. Okay, I like how this is coming together. This spot right here, it's gonna be tricky to figure out what angle to cut those at. Now there may be better ways to do this, to join these two pieces together, but to figure out that exact angle there, it was beyond my math skills. I was not a good math student in school. But like that, um, I'm actually really happy with that. That actually gives me more places that I can make welds. And um, for me, that's a good thing. Yeah. Virtually any steel you buy needs to have oxidation and mill scale removed prior to welding and painting. I bought a cheap uh, second grinder at Harbor Freight. This was like $12 and a wire brush so that I can have one for cutting and one for cleaning. I was using a drill with a little wire brush on it before. This works so much better. I should have done this a long time ago. So I've got that clamped sort of into place more or less. And now I'm just trying to figure out what I'm gonna do with this piece. We'll try and follow the line of the fender here and then, yeah, it's sort of a weird angle since this is at an angle. So that's definitely a weird sort of trapezoidal opening there. It doesn't look like it should work, but it actually fits right on there. I did think about trying to cut away part of it while leaving one flap that could then be folded over onto the end to create the cap. But because it's all weird angles, if I left this flap, it would 
Well, maybe that would have worked. I don't know. It seemed like it was going to fold. It was going to leave. It seemed like any way I folded it, it was going to leave a gap. And so I decided just to, to cut a, a cap out of a scrap that I had sitting around. I'm just holding that cap in place by hand to make a couple of tack welds. Then I can go back and fully weld it on. So I got that capped off with that sort of angle. Before welding my new parts onto the winch mount, I need to remove the paint where I'll be welding. I need to get this position perfectly, and then I'll make a few small welds to secure it to the winch mount. Once I've got both sides tacked on, I can remove the winch mount from the truck and complete the welds all the way around. I did a bunch of reading on whether or not you need to disconnect your battery when you're welding on your vehicle. The majority opinion actually was that it's not necessary. Put your ground clamp close to what you're working on and uh, it's fine. The muffler shops weld on vehicles every day without disconnecting the battery. Uh, there, as you can see, it's just fine. So I've got these arms welded completely on to the winch mount. And um, it is, I think it's strong, strong enough. These don't weigh much. Really all these welds have to hold is these little bits of tube coming out here. And there's really not a lot of weight there at all. I need to cut that off parallel with the line of the truck. And I want to line up this part will become the light mount. And I want it to align with this so it looks, you know, kind of like it was all designed together. The upright pieces for the light mount, um, I got them figured out and cut in place and tacked on here so I could make sure that everything lined up and was in the right spot. And I did have to cut a couple of little notches in the uh, bumper cover right there um, to accommodate those at the angle that I wanted. So you can see how this is coming together. I need to figure out, I'd like to drill the holes for these light mounts before I weld this on. That way I can do it on the drill press. I got some scrap wood in there to help sort of stabilize this. Get some oil on there too. This is just going to be very slow going, just to ease my way through here. Okay, is that big enough? Ah, perfect. I've cut some pieces of this perforated angle steel to make mounting points for my diode dynamics pods. This was galvanized steel, but I've ground off the galvanized coating to eliminate harmful fumes the welding would generate. With everything now fully welded, I'm polishing down any remaining grinder marks with a 120 grit flap disc, and I'm ready to start painting. Over the course of two days, I applied a couple thin coats of primer and three coats of paint, which I let cure overnight before mounting the bumper to the truck and installing the lights. So there you have it. If you have any questions about any of this, just post them in the comments below. Next week, we're gonna get back to some adventures. I've got a big, long trip with Jason of Primal Outdoors. I'm gonna start bringing you next week. I hope you all have a enjoyable holiday season, and thank you for watching.